much. You have no idea how thankful I am, how my rest of staff is. A um, little bit about myself, thanks for the kind words. I don't know how I accomplish I am. I don't think I am that much, but. Uh, so I moved here from Minnesota, most, mostly for warmth, for, uh, you know, <laughs> not only just social, but also, you know, I thought I will talk a little bit here. Uh, but I have been so fortunate to be part of a very, very innovative team at Washington University. The kind of research, the amount of research, the kind of dedication, not just from the PIs like Dr. Grossman, but the whole staff, the whole team members have. Kalpana, amazing person. Um, Marion, amazing person. Every single person at Washington is passionate and dedicated, and I'm so thankful to everybody. A little bit about myself in terms of what I do. I uh, lead our two main projects. I lead our, uh, what we call, half-match stem cell transplant program. As we all know that different people unfortunately get diagnosed with different cancers. Cancer is the second most common cause of death right now after cardiovascular event. So there's hardly any family which directly or indirectly is not affected by cancer. Uh, there are different types of cancers. Um, the hematologic, meaning the blood cancers, which originate from bone marrow. The definitive treatment, the long-term curative option, is stem cell transplantation. However, in order to have stem cell transplantation, you need to have matching. This matching is done at HLA antigens. These are certain proteins expressed on different stem cells. So for an ideal stem cell transplant, you need full, fully matched brother or sister. But uh, only, there are only 25% chances that your brother or sister is going to be a fully matched person. So what do you do for the rest? So traditionally, we would go to the, this agency which was created, initially funded by Navy, called NMDP, the National Marrow Donor Program. I highly encourage all of you to register for that. It's one of the best things which has come out of our um, you know, federal, federal money. So what it does is that it matches these antigens from people who have volunteered just like you for these potential donors. However, the problem is that for ethnic minorities, the odds of finding a donor, a fully matched donor, through an MDP is around 25%. So for an Indian American or an Asian Indian like me, it's 27%. For African Americans, it's down to 18%. So only 18% of the donors or the patients who, have, who are fighting blood cancers and who are African American only 18% of them will be able to find a match donor. That's a big, big problem. So there comes this half match program. People had attempted to do it back in the 80s, but it failed miserably. There's this guy, Leo Luznik, and his collaborators at Johns Hopkins. They started a trick. It was a simple trick using this chemical called cyclophosphamide. It changed the outcomes of this half match, also called haploid identical donor transplantation forever. We here at Washington University have modified that. We call it modified Johns Hopkins protocol. And it's been a huge success. So uh, not just Washington University, but so many other centers like Cleveland Clinic, USC, and other centers um, have adopted our protocol now. So that's one aspect. I'm very thankful to you for your platelet donor, donation because all those patients who are going through half match or full match transplant, they need platelets almost every single day till their own platelets recover, which takes anywhere from you know, 21 days to two months or longer. So that's one aspect of my research and job. My other aspect is this very, very interesting phenomenon so we have these cells, and we have this immune system. These are like fighters in our body which fight infections, which fight, uh, you know, which actually do a lot many more things than just fighting infections, which also fight cancers which we might be developing in our body. One of the cell type is called natural killer cells. It's a very cool name, as you can say, natural killer cells. These are very potent killers. 
of infected cells and of tumor targets. So <clears throat> when I was doing postdoc, I was coming almost, if not every day, every other day, to Farisi Center, getting these byproducts, these LRS chambers of platelet donors. So basically what, it, what they were or what they are is when you donate platelets, you separate the leukocytes from the rest of platelets. And typically you would trash them. But interestingly, those small chambers, which are my best friends, which changed my career forever, they, have high, they are highly enriched in these natural killer cells. So we started playing with them, and uh, we discovered this phenomenon where these natural killer cells can be trained to become supernatural or extra natural killers. So they are robustly um, anti-leukemic, anti-blood cancers. So we published that. It, re it, it uh, received a lot of attention from both national and international reviewers. Mm -hmm. So we went on to start a study, an immunotherapy study. That's the big word these days in cancer therapy, where you use these natural killer cells and other cells like T cells to target patients with different malignancies. In our case, we use these memory-like, because the natural killer cells we discovered are called memory-like NK cells. This is the first of a kind in the world. We have treated so far four patients. Fifth is being enrolled right now. And we have seen some very interesting results. So that's my uh, second part of my research. Um, can't thank enough, again, the kind of support I get at Washington University. I see Carol Rush right there. She has been so instrumental. So she's our liaison with FDA. You know, getting treatment or developing a new treatment takes a lot of work. It takes years, typically. But thanks to Washington University, thanks to Carol and her support, we are able to take this from literally lab when I was coming to Cal and her crew members to get those LRS chambers. We made the discovery in late 2012. We published in early 2013. And 2014, we started this trial. So thanks to Carol, thanks to everybody at Washington University are able to start this trial. But guess what? All these patients need platelets. And thank you to you, all of you, that you know, all of these trials are possible. Can't thank enough. My last um, couple of minutes, I want to talk about this patient. It's a true story. I'm just changing her name. So Becky, Becky is a 27-year-old uh, girl, very smart girl, African-American, who works at Bond Jewish Hospital. I haven't asked her whether she has ever donated plates, but I won't be surprised if she hasn't. She's very smart, very talented. Wants to be a nurse practitioner someday. She's young. She's dating a guy, plans to, go, you know, plans to get married. But alas, gets diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma last year. But when she was told about the diagnosis of Hodgkin's lymphoma, she was also told that in 80% of the time, this is curable. So she was not that disheartened. So she goes to standard treatment. It is remission. <clears throat> but alas, in six months, less than six months, it came back with vengeance. She gets this transplant called autologous transplantation, where you use your own cells as a last ditch effort. Unfortunately, it failed. So this is like December last year. So then what you do? When people fail autologous transplant, have this type of lymphoma, the odds of survival is like less than six months. So all the plans, all the plans of her career, all the plans of getting married, they're all you know, in shambles. We said, wait, there is one more hope. We can do stem cell transplant. It might work. But alas, none of the, she couldn't find any donor, fully matched donor through the NMDP. So what you do? So if she was at most of the centers in the world, she'd be told, sorry, there's nothing out there. But this half match program, we had just started. And we used her own uh, IBQ brother, who was half match, so traditionally would not be used. So we did the transplant. I was the transplanter. I have never seen anybody as fiesty as she was. She was very sassy, which I allowed to, you know, she was like very, uh, she, was, she wanted to know every single thing which was happening to her. She wanted to know every single day. She would spend 25 minutes with me in the room, but I allowed that interaction. She was very smart. And she's now almost six months out. I recently saw her. She's getting married next month. I hugged her. I saw her in the hallway. 
I saw in the hallway, I almost cried when I saw her. She was hard to recognize. She has now new hair and, you know, um, she's a little bit more chubby. And uh, I said, wow, Becky, you have changed. And she said, I'm getting married, and we hugged. But, you know, every single day of her, this journey, she's thankful to you guys. None of this would be possible. Becky wouldn't be here if people like you aren't generous enough to donate platelets. So thank you. Thank you on behalf of my program, research program, and thank you on behalf of all those patients who are alive because of you. Thanks so much. Sydney told me keep it brief. I got five pages, but it's really big print, so I will be brief, I promise. My name's Elizabeth Castellano. I want to tell you a little bit about who I am and who I'm not. I am a platelet donor. I got turned on to donating about two years ago. Um, I had no idea there was this awesome group of dedicated donors in St. Louis who have been giving their platelets for many, many years. I mean, I just can't believe when I hear how long some of these people have been donating. <clears throat> I didn't realize there was a huge bank for the patients down at Barnes Jewish um, that really is like um, just God life giving. It's awesome. I quickly became part of this donating family because of all the knowledgeable staff. As you all know at the centers, they're friendly. They give me food. I love the carbs. I'm trying to figure out how you guys sleep and squeeze the ball at the same time. And I really want to learn that because a nap sounds pretty awesome. Um, I love the emotional support that they give me. And I love the liquid gold. I know you've all seen it, I hope. The bag of platelets that comes out at the end. It's, it's not huge, but it's just magical. It's pretty neat. I am a daughter. My mom just told me yesterday she had the greatest kids in the whole world. She says it every single day. She's my biggest cheerleader. I'm a sister. I have 10 siblings. And that is a speech I'll give later. <laughs> I'm a mother. We have five children. They're the greatest kids. They have great qualities. They're strong. They're humorous. They're humble. They have achieved a lot of things, and they still set um, bars for more things to achieve. They have high ambitions. I'm really proud of them. We would do anything for them. I'm a mother-in-law. Some strong women who've married my sons. Another one to be married this year. And I do love them like my own. They make our sons very happy, which is really what every mother wants. I'm a grandma. Just got the last of the Play-Doh out from under my fingernails about an hour ago. <laughs> and I'm a friend. I have, I've been just so blessed to have um, a group of women surround me for a long time from high school that have taught me kindness and generosity. Our son P was diagnosed in 2012 with leukemia. You guys may remember him. He spoke last year. He talked about having the identical suit of his brother who was sitting next to him at the table. He was really embarrassed by that. But um, when he was diagnosed with leukemia, it was really scary. Scared for him, his future, his girlfriend, his life, his families. But Pete had treatment. He went into remission. We learned a ton about platelets then. Very thankful for them. Uh, he gave his talk here, and then the next month his, he was diagnosed, his leukemia came back. Pete probably won't be talking anymore. I'm sure he feels like he may have jinxed himself. Um, so he went through chemotherapy, he went into remission again. He recovered, which recovery is an easy word to say, and it just it entails so much. It takes a lot of energy, a lot of time to recover, like Dr. Romy said. Uh, he did get a stem cell transplant from his sister, Ellen, and we're happy to say he, Ellen's blood cells are coursing through his veins right now. Um, happy to say I think he's starting to feel better. He returned to his work lately, which he hasn't been consistently working for those two and a half years, and he's really happy to be back at work. And he's smiling a lot. He's got a great new puppy, he and Sarah adopted, and now all their concern is going there, which is really cool to see. We're proud of him for the grace he's shown, his strength and character through these two and a half years. He has really strengthened us. I'd be a whiny, crabby, crying mom, but he's so strong that we have been able to be strong with him. 
When you're in recovery, three things happen to your blood cells briefly. The reds, you know, take a while to come back and they can um, give transfusions for those red cells, thankfully. The white cells, which are fighters, um, they cannot be transfused. So the doctor, the patient, the antibiotics, the germs do this really funny dance. Uh, they're constantly watching to make sure that the patient doesn't get an infection. And it's scary when they do, but they're on top of it. Um, then they, um, the platelets, which are the clotters, which you know, they can be transfused. But they kind of, I think they're, there's not an abundance, so they're very careful about when they use them. As a mother, watching your son, watching his counts go down, and you're kind of just hoping and praying. One of the doctors says, okay, we'll give him some platelets. Takes a couple hours, but when that bag comes in, it is truly liquid gold. It is just a gift, and it's very powerful. And I really think of all of you when those bags would come into the room. Thank you for that. Um, let's see where. Oh, and the difference you see in a couple hours that the bleeding does actually stop. It's pretty amazing. It's really awesome. As moms and dads, caregivers, friends grandmas, parents. We would do anything for our children, our nieces, our nephews, the kids we know down the block. There's one thing I couldn't do is give Pete enough platelets, but I'm happy to say that you could and you did. And that just means so much to us as parents. You had a genuine desire to help someone in need, someone you didn't know, someone that you just had a feeling to give your heart to. and. Um, it's just really precious to us. We thank you for that. Thank you for being the adopted parents we needed, for being our siblings, our adopted children, young kids who are giving just because they have ambition and desire to help people. Adopted friends, adopted team, down at Barnes Jewish. It's just been really nice. And we want you to know we feel very blessed to have you in our lives. And thank you very much. And God bless you all. Thank you. I was asked to tell you why I donate platelets. And I think it would be good if the donors participate too while I'm talking. So if you're a donor, pick up one of the spoons on your table, please. <laughs> this is donors only now. This game is less than five minutes long. Donors, pick your spoons and hold them up in the air. Okay. When I make a statement that you agree with, I want you to tap your table. Go ahead and tap your table. This is good. Okay. good. If I make a statement and you don't agree with it, just go like this. Okay, do we have it straight? <laughs> I, think, I think we're going to have some fun. I have six reasons why I donate. Six reasons. First one is, I just love these planners. That surprised me. It did. Okay. Another major reason why I donate is to get those leftover bandage wraps. Actually, I hear a lot of donors tell me they use these wraps. It's perfect this time of the year because you got your tomato plants and they're starting to grow, and so you're, you're wrapping them. <laughs> <Woo -hoo. clears throat> 
Another major reason why I donate is, bless you, those wonderful denim shirts. And I mean, I love those things. Huh? <laughs> Sir, you're the only one that was doing this. Uh, the, the next reason is a, a collage of many things. So let me get through all the uh, other items, and then, then you do your thing here. Free movies. Nobody knows where you are for two hours. <laughs> no, hold your spoons. Very easy parking. Uh, cookies, juice, the large orange stain that comes right here <laughs> that your grandchildren say, what happened, people? Uh, the nail that's driven, the number six nail driven into your arm. <laughs> hey, and those QT credit cards, what do you think? All those? <clears throat> okay, I wanna, I wanna cover the last two and put your spoons down for a minute, okay? No spoons. Uh, Two more to cover. I donate because of this Farisa staff. They are my family. Now, I do have other family members, but, but, but the staff that takes care of me, I love these people. You know, I have good conversations with them. We talk about raising kids. We talk about dogs, raising dogs and raising cats. We talk about caring for our elderly parents. We share about our medical health issues. We, we talk about how to get some weight off of us. We talk, we have good conversation. And uh, my daughter works at Mercy, and she begged me to go there and do phoresis. And I said, I will go and I will try. And I did, because she's a lot like her mother. And I enjoyed calling her later and saying, uh, "Hon, I did it there, but I'm not going back because you know I've got some deep roots there with the Barnes folks." Okay, so that's that's another reason why is the staff is outstanding. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Final reason, um, I give platelets because it's. It's the right thing to do. I don't care what our religion is, what our faith is. Maybe we don't even have a faith. But I think we all have something that's very important, and that is to help others, to love others, to care for others, do things for other people. And, and we've been blessed with platelets that we can give to somebody. What better? thing can we do to care for someone and express love for someone, and that is to give them part of ourselves. So donors, you got to applaud yourselves too for what you do.